Hello there, this is Professor Googleth, and I just wasted 5 seconds of your time, so you can sue me. Okay, well, that would be a pretty dumb reason to sue me, but that would be about a hundred times smarter than the things these people sued over. So, as you can guess, today I'm going to tell you about 10 dumbest things people sued over. Apple Addiction on June 19 of 2013, 36-year-old Chris Sevier, an attorney in Nashville, filed a lawsuit against Apple for $75,000. In the suit, Sevier cited that their services had corrupted his relationship with his wife through, of all things, giving him access to pornography. Apparently, he tried to visit Facebook.com but accidentally replaced the word face with much more vulgar other words, which led to an insatiable addiction of seeing naked girls, which ended his marriage. His complaint even goes so far as to claim his desire for his wife was reduced as he realized she wasn't 21 anymore. Sevier says that Apple should have a pornographic filter already activated on their devices before consumers buy them, so situations like this can't happen. Man versus God Many people believe in and want to serve God, but in this particular case, one man was more interested in serving him court papers. On September 14 of 2007, 70-year-old Ernie Chambers, a serving state senator in Omaha, filled a lawsuit against God himself, citing the big guy upstairs had either caused or indirectly caused various disasters, specifically pointing to floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and deadly plagues. The lawsuit included a cease and desist order stating that God needed to cease harmful activities and the making of terrorist threats. Chambers claims he didn't file the suit because he has a problem with the deity, but because he wants to fight off any laws that prevent others from filing frivolous lawsuits. Ultimately, the case was tossed due to God not having a fixed address. Personal Injuries after attempting to take his own life by leaping in front of a subway train on March 7th of 1977, 26-year-old Mello Stevens Jr. was left without a leg, an arm, and a part of his other arm. But instead of taking the fact that he survived the attempt as a positive, the Manhattan resident decided to file a lawsuit against the New York Transit Authority. He claimed that the operator of the train was negligent and failed to even attempt to slow down the car until it was too late. Well, despite the fact that the suicidal man deliberately put himself in harm's way, the transit authority couldn't risk standing behind the train operator and, believe it or not, quickly settled with Stevens for $650,000. But just five years later, Mello had a second failed suicide attempt, once again throwing himself off a subway platform. Luckily for New York, this time there were no major injuries. Missing Pants on May 3rd of 2005, 54-year-old administrative law judge Roy Pearson Jr. dropped off a pair of gray dress pants at Custom Cleaners, Washington, D.C. dry cleaning business. Due to an error that involved the pants being set to other dry cleaners, they were offered back to the judge two days later. However, Pearson claimed the pants weren't his. The receipts and tags all matched up, and the pants looked correct, but that wouldn't convince Pearson, and he wound up suing the company for $65 million. The case was well documented in the media, especially after a recess was needed when the plaintiff broke down in tears of the psychological demand of not having his special pants with him. Shocker, custom cleaners won the case, but Pearson, still to this day, says the pants that they tried to give him are not his. Man versus himself People file frivolous lawsuits all the time, targeting major corporations, celebrities, or even their own family members. But it takes something truly special inside someone for them to target himself. Well, that's just what Robert Lee Brock, an inmate at the Indian Creek Correctional Center in Chesapeake, Virginia, did in March of 1995 when he filed a lawsuit against himself for $5 million. According to Brock, he violated his own civil rights and religious beliefs on July 1st of 1993, when he got drunk and was soon after arrested for grand larceny and breaking and entering. Because he was in jail for the next 23 years, Brock couldn't earn money to pay himself the $5 million, so he felt the state should pay for it. And he won. Well, I'm just kidding. The case was dismissed because this guy is a nut job, but the judge did point out that the plan was ingenious. Pepsi Points on March 28 of 1996, a loyalty program was launched by PepsiCo that allowed consumers to collect points of their products and trade them in for premiums such as t-shirts, leather jackets, and glasses. To advertise Pepsi points, a commercial was aired that humorously claimed that a Harrier fighter jet could be purchased for 7 million points. Now, clearly for the rest of us, it was a gag, but that didn't stop 21-year-old business student John Leonard from actually trying to get one. Along with the 15 points that he had collected, Leonard mailed a check for $700,000 for the remaining points that he needed 
and waited calmly for his chat, which never came. So he sued PepsiCo, demanding that they deliver his plane that he felt he rightly deserved. The judge sided with the soft drink company, but many still believe that Leonard was in the right. Too scary. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios in Florida is obviously designed to terrify the pants of people with gory scenes and actors in costumes that make a lot of noise. So they usually only draw visitors that actually want to be scared, which kind of makes sense. Well, apparently 57-year-old Cleely Peters and her 10-year-old granddaughter visited for another reason, altogether because they got the fright of their lives courtesy of a chainsaw-wielding actor and they were so traumatized that they sued the puck. Peters alleges that while two of them were exiting a ride, the actor ran out of the dark and chased them with a loud, albeit chainless tool, causing them to fall to the ground and become petrified. She sued them for $15,000, claiming she suffered psychological trauma. And guess what? The case was thrown out. The Real Jackass in 1997, 38-year-old electrical lineman Bob Kraft legally changed his name to Jackass in an attempt to honor his brother and bring attention to a cartoon character he created. The Hot Springs native spent a few years allegedly bringing honor to the name before in 2000 MTV began airing the show Jackass. It was a crude comedy showcasing gross pranks and stunts. Well, in November of 2003, Mr. S filed a lawsuit against Viacom, the media company behind MTV, claiming his wonderful name had been defamed and his reputation tarnished through plagiarizing. Yeah, with a name like that, so much honor. How could they defile it? The fact that his ridiculous name was used as a title for such a rancher show made Jack feel like he deserved $10 million in damages from the corporation. But sadly for Jackass, his case was tossed out. Beer in real life Beer commercials are usually super upbeat, targeting men, and often showing male beer drinking surrounding by good-looking people and having the time of their lives. Of course, every sip of beer doesn't really come with an instant good time, except that that's something that apparently came as a bit of a revelation to Richard Overton, who on June 6 of 1991 decided to stop the flow of lies by filing a lawsuit. Acting as his own attorney, Overton sued Budweiser and Bud Light companies for $10,000, citing emotional stress was caused when beer drinkers realized that they had been lied to. He also said the I had caused him physical distress as well as financial losses. The case was dismissed, although Overton continues to claim that he and all beer drinkers are being deceived. Fake Jordan Many people take looking like a famous celebrity to be a compliment. In fact, some have even made a decent career out of impersonating them. Well, such was not the case with 51-year-old Alan Hackard, who was constantly mistaken for the legendary basketball player and Nike spokesperson Michael Jordan. In the move that baffled many, Hackard sued both Jordan and Nike for $416 million each, pulling the number seemingly out of nowhere, and citing defamation, emotional pain and suffering, and permanent injury as the reasoning. According to the plaintiff, Michael Jordan stole his likeness, and the shoe company was responsible for making the NBA star a household name, exponentially increasing the trauma. But for some reason, soon after without explanation, Hackard dropped the case. So that was the 10 dumbest things people ever sued over. If you guys enjoyed this, then remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing, because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.